You got tea? I'm drinking some. I do not. But you know, uh, this is probably the first episode that we've done where I do not have tea because I had had tea like an hour before mm. doing this. But you know what I do have? Mm. Yeah. I have a cupcake. <gasps> a cupcake? Because we're talking about m- mental health today. <laughs> and a cupcake is the perfect thing uh-huh. because you need more cupcakes in your life. Is that a red velvet cupcake? It is a red velvet cupcake. It is beautiful. Did you guys make those? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. This is the local bakery that I am in love with. I don't have any cupcakes. Gosh. What the heck? <laughs> I have my tea again. <laughs> but hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the BPB podcast. And today we want to talk about mental health. And I know it's not all businessy. But I feel like it really does affect the way that we conduct business, especially in today's day and age. And it seems to be a really big common theme that we've been seeing online, on posts, people reaching out to us, asking, how are you keeping it together? And so Rory and I decided to have a super open, honest conversation just about our own lives and how things are going. And yeah. Well, this whole podcast is an open, honest conversation yeah. about our own lives, but this is just going in the, the direction of like maybe some you know mental health things that we haven't talked about because we talk a lot about business and business is great and marketing is great and, and that, but we're going we're gonna to go into some stuff that maybe we just haven't had the chance to. There's a lot of stigma around depression, anxiety. And if someone speaks up and says, I'm not feeling so great, people think, oh, are you going to kill yourself? Like there's just these really big trigger word stigma things that I just, I want to address. And I think it's a good plan for us to anyways, because Rory and I, if you guys don't know, we have a band called Forever Yours and our whole entire mission was called You Are Enough. And it was all around suicide prevention awareness. And both our albums are you know, are are all about talking about the importance of how you're enough. And so for the people that have been asking, Hey, like where's forever yours, what are you guys doing? This is what we're doing. We're continuing the conversation just in a different format right now. I hope to get back to doing music because that'd be good for our mental health. You know, 2020, as we all know, was just like a hell of a year. It was by far the most challenging year that I've ever had. How about you, Roy? Yeah. Right. Yeah. In, in so many ways. I mean, look, we, so, okay. Even before the pandemic, my grandmother passed away who I was very close with and same with you, right? Rory, like you're, but both of your grandparents passed away. Both of my grandparents just before like late, you know, 2019 yeah. um, passed away. Yeah. Oh man. So, okay. So that happens, right? So we've got deaths going on. Then there was huge fire threats that happened earlier in the year. And then I had to evacuate from where I was. You had to evacuate from where you were. Then we've got this ice storm that happened recently. That's super stressful. Yeah. So 2021, you know, we we're starting like 2021. We're like, oh, this is going to be like so much better. And I feel like it kind of just started and we were like getting hit by more and more and more where I live. Yeah. We were hit with some ice storms, major damage to our property, to some of our cars, to like our whole town, a major disaster zone, 200,000 people without power for multiple days. Some people for about two weeks without power, you know, thankfully we got ours back within a few days, but we didn't even have cell phone service at all. I mean, towers were down. Yeah. You had to drive to the next town to tell me that we couldn't go live. I remember that. (laughs) Yeah. I'm stuck. There's nothing to do. Yeah. That's super challenging. Well, yeah. And then you're fighting off 200,000 other people to to try to get food and and then places are running out of food because not only are they being overloaded with all this extra people coming in, but then you also have food not being able to get to those stores. It was bad, but it was, it was definitely no, nowhere near as bad as what they were going through in Texas where they weren't, mm. where they didn't even have water. Yeah. So at least we had, we had water. We didn't have heat or anything like that, but it, it wasn't even as cold as Texas. So, you know, they were going through even worse stuff there. 
So I know a lot of people have been affected by this. One, you know, one of our, our guests, Matthew Confer, uh, he couldn't even come on live with us because his whole team was dealing with ice storms in Austin, in Texas. And, you know, it's just, you know, we, we just thought it was going to be like, so great, but it's definitely been a challenge. It's been a challenge for both of us and in so many ways. And we just wanted to share a little bit about what some, you know, some of the challenges we've been going through so that you guys know that one, you know, as business owners, you, you go through challenges. Okay. Yeah. It's like, it's not like everything is great all the time. Okay. Yes. There's some great things of running a business for yourself and, and there's great things uh, that we were able to do and, and we get great satisfaction out of helping people and helping people like yourselves get results in your, your business. But there's also things that we go through and challenges that we have and, and we have talked about it a little bit on the podcast, you know, like when you, sometimes when you're successful, there is a side of that, that a lot of people don't see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we want to bring out some of that and we want to talk about that and we, w- we want to have a, this conversation with yeah. you guys. So what do you want to talk about? Well, I feel like it's important to, to mention just on a, on a personal level for me is yes, we're, we're going to talk about like our, our personal selves, right? Like I, a lot of big life transitions in 2020 for me, like bought a house, moved, you know, halfway across the country, away from family, super isolated, never endured, you know, winter where there's snow. Like, so this is totally, there's a lot of new stuff going on in my life. Rory, I know you guys lost your childcare and both of us have kids at an age where it's like they need attention all the time. And so I know we just released an episode last week with Lindsay Wander. So if you haven't listened to that one, make sure you do, because she's got some super awesome strategies all about really how to just tutor kids and how to take care of kids at home and, and provide them super, super solid foundational stuff so that they can be successful, especially right now while everyone's still home. So yes, there's the personal side where it's like, oh man, this is such a bummer. But I, I have to say like, yes, we don't have COVID. Thank God we're physically healthy enough where we can continue to function and make money and still do what we do for our clients, which is great. But I have to be super honest and just say that in this last week, This whole pandemic, feeling everything that's happened, all came crashing down on me in one night. I had back-to-back panic attacks. I I just, I lost it. Like, could not stop crying. And I've been holding everything for so, so, so long, just keeping it together. Like, for my work, for our work, for the podcast, for everyone emailing me, and for the family. And it just really thinking about where everything is on a global level, how many people have passed away, the people that don't have enough right now. It just, I'm feeling that so intensely. So I know Rory, you, you made a point earlier about just because you're successful, you might have all the wealth in the world. If we're not having like mental success, if we don't feel good about what's happening around us, right. It's super challenging. So I've been feeling super low mood. Depression is definitely the right word. And I went and got some blood work done just because I felt like this, something doesn't feel right to me. So I went to the doctor and I got some blood work done. Well, it came back that I was extraordinarily vitamin D, D for Dominica, (laughs) vitamin D deficient in a huge way. And so there's things that I think we can forget as business owners, super basic, like, Hey, go sit outside in the sun for 10 minutes. Or, hey, take a vitamin D supplement or a vitamin B supplement. And and look, I'm not a doctor. Go see your doctor. You might not need any of that. But for me, wow, did it help my mood because I just forgot. I'm forgetting to take care of myself. And I got to out myself. Like, this is going to go public. People are going to hear this. And I'm forgetting to take care of myself in the process of wanting to continue to take care of everything else around me. And, you know, damn it, sometimes it's really, really hard and very overwhelming. One of the things that one of the, like the, I guess, traits that makes you and I successful, and it's one of the things that probably I've drilled into you <laughs> <laughs> is, is that part of it is just, that's my, my personality is that your work ethic and your success, a lot of it comes down to like just outworking people. Like you may not be the best at something, but if you can outwork people, you'll get the results. And, and part of that, sometimes you forget to look after yourself. Yeah. 
you know, because yeah. it's very, you know, we become obsessive and <laughs> workaholic. Yeah. And very focused on like, we are accomplishing this at all costs. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I talked about this in another episode where there's, you know, the paths to success, 1% or 200%. 1% is, you know, very small incremental stages where we've talked about it's like five minutes every day you can make incremental results and you're very consistent with that. The 200% is where you go beyond your limits and do something amazing. Like, you know, th this is the stuff where they like make movies about it, right? <laughs> where it's a moment in time where you sit down and you do something that you normally wouldn't be able to see yourself doing, but you just, you get through it. Mm -hmm. And we've done that so many times in our lives and in our businesses that has leveled this up and over and over and over again to be able to do that. And that becomes the way we do things. Yeah. But sometimes that has a toll. <laughs> yeah. Not sustainable, yeah. even though I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes we have to pull back and, and realize that that's not always the way to do things. Sometimes it, it's good. You know, it's like Will, Will Smith has this quote where he says, like, you put me on a treadmill, you will not outrun me. Like, <laughs> that's that's the mental idea of, of what I'm talking about. It's like, it's like you will not outwork me. Mm -hmm. And you know this about me. Right. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And and it was it was like that when we were in the recording studio and, and like work, you know, I remember working with other bands where they would come in and we would record their stuff and they would go home and I would be the one that would stay there and I would go back. I would re-record parts. I would edit the stuff. I would mix it and they'd come back in the next morning and the song would sound great. And they'd be like, what happened? I'm like, well, this is what it took. This is what was necessary to get the final product. And you guys weren't willing to stick around and do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you and I used to, we would meet 12 to 12 to 12. That was our schedule. We and would then usually, and then I worked from 12 to four after you left. Right. Yeah. Right. And the only reason that I left is because I had to sing the next day. Right. You got to protect yeah. the vocals. Well, and and my point. wife was like, you need to go home. <laughs> That's true. She's like, okay, too much Dominica time. Get out of my house. That's fair. That's 100% fair. Oh, dude. Carly is amazing for just enduring all of that. <laughs> oh my gosh. But if you we weren't ready for it. Like, I mean, well, look, you were like, what is going on? <laughs> we, we had a schedule, like, and we were trying to stick yeah. to it and we did, but my voice has not been pushed like that ever. But it was good. It was super good training because at the time we were doing a rock album and I'm a jazz vocalist. So it was really like <laughs> this crazy transition. But again, like I remember we, we had this moment where I was like, what are we going to call our band? And you were like, I don't know. And I made a joke. I was like, how about forever pushing? Because you're always just pushing the heck out of me. And it's still it's still happening. But in in a healthy way, it's not like it's a it's not like I'm saying, no, I can't do that. There have been times, though, when I was like, F off. I'm not doing <laughs> this. I'm too tired. I can't anymore. But I mean, I met you when I was uh, eight, 19, 19. That sounds right. 18. It was, we met when you were 18, but we didn't start working on music till you were 19. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, all that to say, it's been a long time now. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the work ethic is deep on like the things that we do. And I yeah. feel like it's important that we have to check each other. Mm -hmm. of like, hey, is this way too much? For example, like the podcast, we have decided that we need to hire some help because I've never seen a podcast that does the type of stuff that we do. I mean, it's like a full-time job in and of itself. You know what? We'll probably do an episode at some point where we walk you guys through exactly what we do from a content standpoint, keyword research, search engine optimization, the videos, the editing, the graphics. I mean, it's the list goes the on. Advertising, the advertising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, it's, crazy. Yeah. it's, it's insane. And it's a ton of work. And so and now we built out all the systems and all mm -hmm. the processes ourselves yeah. with the intention of handing it off to and training other people. Mm -hmm. We have to, we're, yeah. we're on our 33rd episode, I believe this is episode 33, 31. This, this one's 31. This, wow. This one's 31. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So, so episode 31 here, now it's time. It's like, got to hand the baton off. Right. So with us talking about like these tips and things about just like business, mental health in general, why don't we go over 
the seven daily actionable tips that we do to keep us in check and that we encourage others to do. I think this is important, you know, first off to say is that we came up with these because we push ourselves to extremes sometimes. And this is how we do check ourselves and pull ourselves back. And, you know, like Dominica was saying, like last week, it kind of a little bit came crashing down for her. So, you know, sometimes that happens. We push a little bit beyond our own thresholds and say, okay, well, we need, we need to pull back. What, what are the things that we can do to get back and centered? And so we wanted to share some of that with you right now. Yeah. So number one, this one's my favorite. <laughs> We're just going to start with my favorite, which is <laughs> it's okay to say no. Classic example is I get people emailing me all the time saying, Hey, you know, can you help me with my WordPress fix? Can you, can you help me with my hosting? Can you explain this to me? What do you think about this branding thing? And you know what guys? No, <laughs> sometimes I just can't. <laughs> if you want me to, you know, put it on my calendar. <laughs> it sounds insensitive, but I have to say no, because that will just be my entire life. It was for years. I was like, sure, I can help you with everything and anything. And you just get to that point where it's okay to say no. Yeah. Well, I'm, right now my calendar is booked out. Yeah. That's the other thing. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk maybe in December? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You get to that point where it's like, you have to look at, at things and, and look at your opportunities. And as you continue to grow your business, you start having to, to say no to more and more things because it's called opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. And your opportunity to do something larger or to make a bigger impact gets affected by all the other little things that take up your time and your energy. Totally. Oh, I love that you just said that to make a bigger impact. Yeah. Cause it's not like we're just, I mean, it is all fun and games. We love what we do. Right. <laughs> but we're also doing our best to make the biggest impact we have. We only have so much time on this planet in this life. So oh, yeah. yeah, you, you can, you can get more money, but you can't get more time. That's, that's the thing. Yeah. I even asked that question in our private mentorship, a Facebook page. If you guys, you know, if you're not in the mentorship Facebook page, send us a little note if you want to be a part of it. It's pretty cool. But I asked that question just yesterday. What would you rather have? Do you want to have more time or more money and why? And the majority of people said money. And I'm thinking, wow. Interesting. Yeah. Because the money would afford them more time was the reason why, was the main reason why. And I thought, well, maybe someone needs a job shift, <laughs> a job change. Well, let's, you know? let's, let's, let's talk about this in a few minutes after we're done with these Sure. Tips. Yeah. We'll come, we'll come back. back. Number two is automate, streamline, take some things off your plate. You can outsource things if you need to. You would be amazed at how much you actually can, in fact, outsource really the majority of these tasks that you don't need to be a part of. Just outsource them and you'll save so much time. Guaranteed. This, this is the probably the hardest one for me. Hmm. I'm not saying this to toot my own horn, but I, I like, I'm legitimately when I go and learn something to do something, I learn it so well that it's so hard to find someone who can do it better than I can. That is the issue finding someone. And then you've got to balance also your, the cost of doing business, right? So yes, you can probably find someone that can do it better than you, but you also have to do it in a cost-effective manner that is going to allow you to charge a certain rate for your services. And finding that balance is, is difficult sometimes. And I struggle with that. That's one of my biggest struggles. I totally hear where you're at. If I would have thought way ahead of time, I would not have named my business after me. I would have named it something completely different because I am the business, which I'm always teaching. You're not the business. Take yourself out of it in case you want to sell it later. But in this case, it caught on and we're down the line, you know, 10, 12 years now. And here we are. But with that being said, what I realized is there's going to be a period of time where I'm going to have to train somebody and provide someone, give someone an opportunity to learn what you learn, to teach them. And then they can go off and learn even more and get better than you are. I mean, that's the whole goal about training my team. Yeah. I want them to be way better than me so that I don't have to go out and learn that thing, <laughs> you know? 
but yeah, I know, I think, I, know it's hard. I think in some ways you've done a better job of that with, with some of your, the way you've developed your team. I have, I have, you know, a bunch of people who work on my team as well, but I have a very select few that work as the main core. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a lot of contract pieces out to mm-hmm. people who specialize. Well, what you do is, I mean, so, so, so much more in depth than what I do. Right. So of course it's very easy for me to be like, outsource it all. I don't outsource <laughs> everything. Of course. I mean, I'm doing hundred yeah. percent of the consulting and you can't outsource strategy. That's the thing. Very well said. You cannot outsource strategy. That's the quote of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> that's what people pay us for because that's the thing. Yeah. You know, especially, I mean, we were talking, we were chatting about this earlier about big picture and our personality types and things like that Mm -hmm. and how that is what makes us unique and why we're so good at what we do is because we can see the pieces and put them together in ways that other people can't see them. And that's what they need help with. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so when we can do that for people, there's a lot of consultants out there. Very few people can actually do that and put it together and have it actually get a result for people. Right. And 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 have the team, right? Yeah. That's the thing. If you consider the smaller tasks and think, do do I really need to do that? It it, it just comes down to to planning, to putting it into your own personal business strategy. I was, I was able to point to like, you know, where I'll even outsource my, my email. That's, that was one of the things I was actually working on before the pandemic. And then be a game uh, changer. And then, yeah. The email is totally out of control. I I mean, it's, it's like, (laughs) it's like every, I don't know, every 10 minutes, there's like a hundred more emails. It's just, it's nonstop. I I wake up, I I spend just to scroll through and determine like, what is an email that I have to respond to, (laughs) respond to, or like pay attention to Mm -hmm. a good 45 minutes. Just, oh no, I'm with you. So yeah. I, I'm looking right now. So I, cle- I came so close to clearing out my inbox one day. I just like sat down. I had a couple extra hours. I'm just going to go through this and just like bulk delete. I don't need any of this. And that was about a week and a half ago. And now I'm back up to 39,744, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun never ends everybody. But Hey, let's get back to this list real quick. So, so far we have, it's okay to say no automate streamline. And look, if, if you're in a position like Rory is where the tasks are just a lot, just look at the smaller tasks. It's the small tasks that take up so much of your time. You can outsource that stuff. Okay. Number three is move your body. Get moving. I know that for me, it's super, super cold here. I don't want to move at all. I just want to bundle up, sit on the couch and do nothing, but I don't get to So (laughs) I have, I have the treadmill set up and I'm just, I'm getting on it at least every other day. I'll do a couple miles. I'll go out and do some hiking when the weather's nicer, but just move your body in any way you can. If you cannot go outside, there's so many good at home videos, do some jumping jacks, whatever, like go up and down your stairs. Rebounder, trampoline. Yep. Get a low impact thing. Spin bikes are great. Anything. I noticed a huge increase in mood and like, God bless my husband. He was like, Hey, let's challenge each other to do this. Like at least every other day, I needed him to challenge me to get it done because that's like my personality. I needed a contest, you know? So find a person that can hold you accountable to this because it's so easy to be like, eh, still in a pandemic, ah, Cheetos, you know? (laughs) So (laughs) that's, that's the other piece. I'm trying so hard to lose weight because I just, I'm feeling the weight of everything. I'm way heavier than I would like to be. And it's, it's time. It's like, I don't really have an option to not lose the weight now. There's really no excuse. I have to do it. Well, yeah. And then, you know, they talk about pandemic weight gain, right? Mm -hmm. The COVID-19 y'all. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know, a, a lot of it is that some, you know, some of it is the mental side of it. Everyone just kind of like gave up a little bit. It was like, well, you know, we're stuck inside. So we're just going to eat, eat what we want and not focus on this. And so people start gaining a little bit of weight and not going out as much as a big part of that, you know, but wet pants for, life. you know, we're, we're kind of at this point where it's like, we got to look after ourselves a little bit. 
if all you've got is walking, it's way better than nothing. Next up on our list, drink a lot of water. Roy does not have this problem. Trust me. The man drinks water yeah. like crazy, but we're supposed to like- feel this constantly all day. Yeah. If, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a large Yeti. If you're watching on video, if you're listening on the podcast, I'm holding a large <laughs> Yeti container. <laughs> is that the one I got um, you? It's the one you got me. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeti for the yeah. win. So I feel this constantly all day. I drink water and tea, nothing else. I mean, my tea has uh, milk in it sometimes. Sometimes it's just plain tea, but but that's it. I don't drink sodas. I don't drink sparkly water. I Nothing, nothing like that. You know, I may deal with some other issues and, and stuff. I really think the the water, the amount of water that I consume helps keep things in check and balance. Well, yeah, it helps your joints. It helps your mental state. Yeah. My vice is bubble water, carbonated everything. I don't drink soda. I'm not, I'm not really big into the, the sugary drinks, but man, I, I mean, look, I, I always have one on standby, right? Like I love these things. Waterloo is delicious. And my husband has to constantly remind me like for every one of those you drink, you have to drink two full glasses of water because you're dehydrating yourself. It's like this never ending battle of like me knowing I shouldn't. <laughs> But well, it's so good. okay. The reason I don't drink anything with carbonation is Leaches because calcium from your bones. It creates o- osteoporosis, and we don't yeah. need any of that. No, we don't. It's a bad habit I'm trying to kick. I, I yeah. really am. You may be like, oh, like, oh, he just doesn't drink soda. I like my soda or whatever. No, I used to drink a six pack of soda every single day. Every single day. My vice was uh, Bark's root beer. <laughs> which has the most sugar in it of any of, of the sodas, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I, I would, I would have, yeah, a six pack of, of that every, every single day, you know, up until I was 18. And then I, you know, I, my skin was breaking out all the time. I, I was just gaining weight. I didn't feel good. I just, you know, using, I don't know, whatever mental willpower. I just woke up one day. I said, mm-hmm. I'm not going to drink soda and didn't. <laughs> There you go. The water thing is important. I actually have this app on my phone. Isn't this sad? I have to have an app on my phone that reminds me like, ding, ding, drink water. Cause I just, I forget, I forget to eat. I forget to drink. And then at the end of the day, I'm just like, pizza, what's convenient, you know? And that's, I, I feel like a lot of business owners and entrepreneurs do that. We work, work, work so darn hard. And then it's like, oh yeah, got to make food for the kids. Oh yeah. Wait a minute. Feed myself. Oh, mac and cheese. And then that's like all I've had. Right. And it's a never ending cycle of just like easy, delicious carbs, which super does not help. So water finding, finding that balance of, you know, not overdoing it where you're going to hurt yourself. Like a gallon is not recommended. Well, don't, yeah. Don't drink a gallon in like once, like, th- no, don't down it or something. <laughs> right. You're supposed to drink twice the amount of, was it, or half, half the amount of ounces of your body weight in water is that, I think that's the calculation. So I think it's like, if you're 200 pounds, you're supposed to drink a hundred ounces of water, something like that. That's a lot of water in a day though. Not really. How many ounces are in a gallon? 128. So, so ju- yeah, I guess just shy of a gallon you're drinking. Not you, but like a person who's, who's 200 pounds would like be drinking. No. Yeah. Wow. That's okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Just go to Google and you can see the, but the other side of it is that it will drinking this, that much water will deplete some electrolytes Mm -hmm. and you need to remember that you also need to replenish sometimes. So sometimes if I'm starting to, if I've been drinking a lot of water, like just days on and just like straight and sometimes I'll just like grab some Gatorade. Yeah. um, Something. And, and try and lift myself back up a bit. I, cause I can start to feel it when it's coconut water, coconut water is a good one too. for The electrolytes. Gatorade works really well for me. Coconut water does not. I have some Mm -hmm. issue with it. Man. (laughs) <laughs> but you know, you know me and the, the issues. <laughs> <laughs> Man's got issues. That's it. Yeah. That's another episode. This guy's got issues. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we we all got our issues. But all right, back to the list. This oh, is- you mentioned vitamin D, right? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was gonna say I got my vitamin D. It's right here. Oh, good. You found one that works for you. I'm working on it. We'll see. We'll see if good. it sticks. Nice. Um, but it, it has next to nothing in it, but vitamin D. So perfect. Is it like a dropper? Like you put it in water under the tongue or something? Yeah. Just straight, okay. like 20 drops or whatever. That's good. It is amazing how much that has boosted my mood <laughs> just sitting in the sun. So where I'm at, if I didn't say this before, 
where I'm at is so, so, so dark right now. I live what's called on the dark side of the mountain. We don't get a lot of sun during the day, but I can see it. I'm like, crap, please come over here a little more. So the few times during the season where the sun like does peek out, I'm like on the porch sitting there like, yes, soak in the rays. I need the rays. <laughs> <laughs> Boost my mood. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. And like, you know, we were talking like a, a week or two ago about how you know, my, my vitamin D levels are actually significantly lower even than yours. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, that's yeah. right. I sent you my test results. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I like allergic to so many supplements that I've been having to test and go through and try all these different supplements. Like you run into these things that you don't even think about sometimes yeah. where, you know, everyone's got different things that mm -hmm. they're dealing with. Like we're talking about, it's like, sometimes you're throwing these curveballs in life and you're like, Okay, well, I wasn't expecting that. Well, I've got to deal with it. I was talking with this guy. It was like maybe, yeah, it was about a week ago. And it was just after, you know, my wife had surgery and uh, there was the ice storms and stuff. And he's like, I'm really surprised you're on this call. Hmm. You know, because I was telling him all like all this stuff that had happened and like our cars got damaged and our property was damaged and stuff. And he's like, like, shouldn't you be handling that? I'm like, no, I'm here. We need to focus on this and get this done because this mm. is like, this is what I am looking to accomplish and move this forward. Like that stuff, like I'm handling that, but if I'm not here moving this forward, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And like that type mm -hmm. of like attitude, people aren't used to that. Mm. They like, they're used to people al allowing all the excuses to get in the way of them accomplishing their goals. Yeah. And he That's was really definitely surprised. not you. He, he was really surprised because that he's, he was not used to seeing that as well. I don't know if you experienced this, but whenever there is like a crisis happening that I can, that's completely out of my control. I prefer to dive into work. It's like, that's kind of my coping thing where it's like, I just want to get this done so that I'm not consumed by like what my client needs so that then I can go ahead and focus on this other stuff. Is it the same for you? I mean, it just depends on the situation. Yeah. I'm good in, I'm good in crisis. You really are. You're you're so calm, cool, collected. I'm over here freaking out usually, you know. Yeah. Well, I got a wife who freaks out too. So one of us has to be calm. Sorry. There's <laughs> you have two of us. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Anyways, okay, guys, back to this list. I'm sure like get to the point. It's like people. the longest list description. Ever. Hey, you know what? It's good for everyone's mental health. We're chit-chatting. This is good. <laughs> <laughs> Next up on the list is, is like an obvious one, but I've been struggling with big time is sleep. You need your sleep. You really need your sleep because if you don't sleep, the brain starts to get a little bit wonky and then it's harder to get motivated. It's harder to lose weight. You don't want to do anything. And it's especially hard when you have kids. I feel like I haven't slept since before Emma was born. We're coming up on three years. <laughs> <laughs> And James is what, eight now? Seven? Seven. Seven. So yeah. Have you really slept since James has been born? I have, but I've had so many other things. So I've always had issues with sleep, like most of my life. But things got really out of, out of whack in 2020 with my sleep. Yeah, you had opposite schedule. We were working on yeah, opposite so, schedules. Yeah. But my schedule kept flipping. Mm. And so what ended up happening is because we, we do these book launches and my team would be awake for a certain part of the launch. And then I would be awake for part of the launch mm -hmm. and to manage it all. But I would be awake until like four or five in the morning. And then they would take over from five until noon. And then I would, you know, come back and check on things after that. And so it, it just went through this like cycle is like every time we did a launch, I would get on this like crazy nighttime schedule and then it would continue because my body naturally wants to be on that schedule from all the years of playing in bands and, you know, the, doing our the night shift. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I, I actually, you know, I feel better being on the morning schedule, like, you know, waking up five in the morning or whatever, I just feel better. But as I've gotten older, I noticed that. But the the thing is, is that like we we're doing so many launches, I was flipping back and forth. So I'd be like 
three weeks on a night schedule and then three weeks on a morning schedule, then yeah. three weeks on a night. It was just going back and forth and back and forth. And like it was taking this huge toll on me, both mentally and physically. And I was like, I can't keep doing this. And I'm you know, still in some of that dealing with that because it doesn't fully go away when you're like dealing with that and it, as part of like a business, the business structure and with how it's been. But the thing is, is that I had, I actually had to buy a, uh, a weighted blanket. And that was one of the things that, that helped me. You needed a hug. Because I was having issues. I was, I was having issues falling asleep and staying asleep. Hmm. What, what was happening is that on the nights where like I was wanting to go to sleep, like say er, like early, like, you know, like nine o'clock. I go to sleep at nine o'clock, but I'd wake up at one in the morning because my body was so used to being up at night. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't get back to sleep until five in the morning and getting the weighted blanket helped get me past and through that. Interesting. I'd stay oh. asleep. And then, so I've been overall sleeping uh, better. Well, good. Yeah. And I've just been trying to focus on, you know, eight hours of sleep. Like that's, that's my thing. If I can get eight hours of sleep, uh, consistently, then I function a lot better. Yeah. It's amazing how much of a difference that makes. I still yeah. am not sleeping well. Just, yeah. Yeah. Every day is a struggle. You want maybe, maybe try her weighted blanket? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I tried all the sleep supplements. I tried everything. That was the thing that did it for me. And I, I didn't even like think it was going to work, but I had read some studies on it where they said that when they were doing these tests and comparing it against all the supplements and all the things like that, that was almost like a 25 times difference. Really? Wow. Like how much wow. Wow. Of a difference it made. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I got to try that out. My issue is I don't have a problem getting to sleep. It's the staying asleep. Right. Yeah. Like, like you said, but once I'm up, so I, I'll like wake up every 20 minutes but I dream super vividly. I always have where I actually, like, I feel like it's real. Where when I, when I wake up, I'm like, did that actually happen? I have to check myself. I'm like what is happening? And they can be dreams about like what's happening with the world. It's happening with family or something just really random that has nothing to do with anything, but it really is distracting. Like my husband doesn't dream at all. I'll ask him, like, do you have any dreams last night? He's like, I haven't dreamt since I was a kid. I haven't, no, man, that must be nice. <laughs> must be really nice to not be distracted <laughs> with that because it's just yeah it's a lot so hmm. if anyone has any good advice on like how to not have crazy vivid dreams i'm all ears <laughs> <laughs> uh, i read this study about sleep this was only like a week or two ago that it came out and what they did is that they studied all of these doctors in training essentially like people who were training you know going through the the medical programs they were looking at their, their sleep and they were looking at people who had the best mental health out of them. And the people who had the best mental health and the people who consistently felt the best and performed the best were the people who went to bed and woke up at the same time every day. Mm -hmm. and that was the only difference. Interesting. There was a whole full-blown study done on this. So that that would be a huge tip around sleep. It's something I'm working on. Once I read that, I was like, I've got to figure out how to be more consistent with my sleep. I'm changing my whole business model just yeah. because, well, not only because of that, but because I know that that's such a an effective thing. And I, I've been thinking about like, that has to be a part of of my life. And if I can implement that, then my mental health overall will be better as well. Totally. If you think about kids, pediatricians recommend sleeping seven to seven, seven at night to 7 a.m. Getting the kid to do that, however, is a whole different deal, right? <laughs> however, right. we actually, we, we hired a sleep specialist for Emma. She didn't want to go to sleep until like midnight. And it was driving us nuts, but we finally hired somebody, got this light. This light is incredible. It's recommended for adults and for kids. It's called the hack light and it acts as a noise machine as well as a light, but you can change that color of the light to any color in the room 
that either, you know, your kid wants, or that is good for you. And then she knows that, Hey, when it's time to wake up, that light will turn green, but she cannot come out of her room until it's seven o'clock when the alarm goes off and light turns green. You can do the same as an adult. You can get your melatonin stuff. You can get a light, get a noisemaker. There's, there's things to do for sure. But having that seven to seven for a kid makes sense. So maybe for, you know, you, it's from obviously 12 hours would be glorious, but it probably wouldn't make much sense. Seven, seven to seven, you know, when, when we had no power a few weeks ago, that was, we had nothing else to do. I mean, we had no power, no phones, like no cell service, nothing. So we are like, okay, well, we can't just sit around here in the house with no lights or whatever. So we're just like, ah, we'll just go to bed. But I'm the type of person that I want no light. I want no sound mm-hmm. when I sleep. Mm-hmm. And the fact that there was no, like I already have blackout curtains, but there was absolutely no light coming through and there was no electricity. There was no hums. There was nothing around. Mm-hmm. Like I was out and seven o'clock out, woke up. Like it was probably about six or seven in the morning. That sounds amazing. And you needed that it. was, that was it. consistent. Yeah. And it just goes to show that like our bodies can do that. And also, it also shows that like, we're, we're different, like figure out what works for you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I'm, some people need sound and I, I cannot sleep if there's sound. I'm the same way. I can't, it has to be so quiet and super pitch black dark. I don't know if that's just from being musicians, but yeah, when it's time to sleep, it's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I don't want any sound at all. Yeah. yeah. No sound. Nope. How funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can we move on? Can we move on next? Yeah. Okay. Like I said, the longest list in history. I Let's really go. hope that that did not put people to sleep talking about all this. sleep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up guys. Oh, and this, we're just going on this more relaxation situation is downtime. Let's talk about downtime for a second or just quiet time, alone time, taking the time to do that. And look, downtime is not sleep. Two totally different things. How do you take downtime? Roy? It depends. There's, there's a couple ways. Some, sometimes downtimes with the family, like we're just hanging out mm-hmm. doing stuff. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, you know, it's with, with Carly or like we're hanging out. Sometimes it's, you know, watching, watching um, a movie together or a TV show that we want to watch, things like that. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it's by myself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's something that I want to do that I, like I'm interested in. And other times it's complete, complete silence. Mm-hmm. It just depends. But that downtime is, you know, it, it's very thought out. I've, I've said this uh, in, a, in another episode. I need downtime every day, but I need downtime away from people mm-hmm. because I need, I need to energy disconnect from people. Yeah. Because we're so energy connected because we're dealing with, with clients all day long. Mm-hmm. I'm dealing with the kids all day long, you know, and stuff like that. It's just like, I need, I just need to get some me time. And sometimes I'll, I'll, I just like sit and think, I think about business. I th- I'm going to fix the world's problems, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's like just time to, to be creative and just allow that to be, but yeah, every, every day, if I can get that, then great. Don't always get it every day, but most days I always try and fit it in. Cause I know I need it. I restructured my entire business last month to where back to the outsourcing stuff where I started outsourcing the super small tasks that I really didn't need to be doing. So I take at least 20 minutes and I've been painting by number because that's really fun. <laughs> or that's what my out. mom's been doing. She's been doing these amazing pictures nice. for the kids. Wow. Yeah. It's just a mindless fun. You feel accomplished. You're literally painting inside the lines and it feels really good. I had a really complicated one that I'm really enjoying. The artwork stuff has been fun for me. So for downtime, that's what I've been, I've been doing recently. Even if it's not pretty, it's still fun. Well, yeah. The no judgment zone. I also started writing some, some songs that'll have to send your way. See what we can do. Yeah. Well, we still got a, a another song we got to release too. That's, that's true. Yeah. I have a whole album. So this brings us, I think, to the next one, right? Which is... Take five minutes to do something you enjoy. Yeah. Take, you know, I mean, you can take longer, obviously, but we talk, we've talked about before, like the five minute strategy is mm-hmm. that you can accomplish a lot in five minutes. And sometimes you only get five minutes, you yeah. know, um, that's just, that's how days go. But if you can take five minutes and just do something that you 
that you love, that you enjoy doing, that really does help. You know, for me, it's music. And I, I put a lot of my energy and emotion in, into music. And, you know, I think that comes through in that, in the way that I write. So sometimes when I'm dealing with an emotion or I'm struggling to convey it through words, I'll just let the instrument Mm-hmm. channel it and I get it out and move on. And it, like, it allows me to process it. Like therapy. Yeah. yeah you know, therapy. one of the things I was thinking about, so, cause uh, you know, I have this uh, metal metal album that it's so good. Working oh on. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I wrote it like right after my grandparents passed mm-hmm. away. And so a lot of it was just dealing with that and and then and you know and then you know it was just you know just before COVID hit when I wrote all the music for it uh, and then we started working on the the vocals and the lyrics right after Bjorn got off the road because all the tours were canceled and right and stuff and so it was just kind of like one of these things I was thinking about it and it's like so many people have have died and so I was thinking about this the other day. I'm like, and this relates to mental health in that, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff to try and, you know, prevent suicide, but there's not a, not so much about like the dealing with grief l- loss, you know, like we talked a lot of, there's, there's stigmas and stuff around it, or like, you know, someone dies to me, it's like, it's always there. I noticed this with my grandmother when mm-hmm. my uncle passed away. It was always just right there. You know, it's like, yeah, you, you, you know, you learn to deal with it and you, you move on, but it's like in a moment's notice, it's there to that person, mm-hmm. you know, that feeling of them being gone. And I, and I was thinking about it. It's like, well, the, the music that I, that I wrote for that metal album, what I want to call the album is for those left behind hmm. because I feel like we need like, you know, the world, all the people that have been left behind, all the people we we've, we've lost, we're dealing with, mm-hmm. with this mm-hmm. and we need something. We need things that are going to make, you know, help us feel better and help us get through, help us process. Yeah. Yeah. And I like you know, that for a me, lot. writing the music was helping me to process it. Yes. And, and so, you know, I hope that it'll, help other people. Like I want, I, I just want the music to mean something like to be meaningful. Mm-hmm. Like that's my goal. I don't want it just be another album that I put out. Yeah. Well, I having heard it, I think you've definitely accomplished that. I like the title. That's good. We have lost so much. It's not just being uncomfortable. And I think that's in large part why, why I wanted to just go down this list and talk about these things. It's just the loss, the grief, it is so intense and it's, it's okay not to be okay. I'm sure everyone's probably heard that, but at some point it's not okay to just not talk about it. You know what I mean? And so as a bonus, something else that I think is obviously very important is if you're feeling super down, please talk to somebody, you know, Mm -hmm. and I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking your best friend, which is a good start, but it's important to actually reach out to a professional. I did it. I have a counselor now because I'm just, I'm grieving a lot, not just because of COVID, but like Rory said, like our, you know, our grandparents passed away and there's, there's just stuff. I think when you have a lot of time to sit around and process what the heck is happening with life. And I think Rory, you and I are are in the stage of life where it's like, okay, we're in our thirties. Now what business is great. Things are good, but what's next? Like what's, what are we going to do now? You know, are we going to just keep doing this? I mean, what's going to happen in the future? Is there ever going to be things going back to normal? Is this the new normal? Do we need to process all that? So it's okay to just say, Hey, I need a little help. I need a little support. I need someone to hear me out. And uh, yeah, you're not alone in any of that. If that's how you're feeling. So please, please reach out to somebody. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And then there was a few other things that we wanted to talk about as well. Right. And, and to wrap up the tips. Okay. If nothing else, if nothing else, you can just go get a red velvet cupcake <laughs> okay? because that will help. <laughs> I was reading this article the other day and this guy, this guy was talking about how there's like, you should take an eight hour shower every week. 
And he was talking about like, you know, how entrepreneurs need all this creativity time. And it's true, right? We need this time to, to process information. Mm-hmm. And, and I, like I've mentioned this before, showers are like one of my best creative times, but we don't always get eight hours. We, we don't, you know, eight hours a week in the shower would be fantastic. But, you know, I'm, I'm lucky, you know, if, if I get four hours in the shower, that's a fantastic week. Two is probably more about normal overall. Right. But the thing to remember is that like, we, we all have to take this time and find this time in our lives to find that creativity and find that moment where we can go out and just say, okay, look, I'm going to uh, use this time and 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 just pull back uh, from everything. I'm going to turn off the uh, electronics, or I'm going to get away from the noise for a few minutes. Maybe that's in the shower. Maybe it's at a park, sitting by yourself. What, whatever your happy place is, and take some time for reflection. You know, if you have a notebook or you're going to dictate notes, whatever it is, it's important to to do that as business owners because some of our best ideas come out. The things that I come up with for the ends of the podcast episode, like for the next episode where I have to like introduce the next episode and, you know, get you to go to Apple Podcasts. So, you know, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review, you know, and and make it fun and interesting and stuff like that. Hopefully, you know, all of that comes usually in the shower about 10 minutes before I've got to shoot the video. I just get in the shower and I start thinking about it and I say, what is that going to be? And just the ideas start flowing. When you allow yourself to get into a creative space and be open to it and you find that thing that works for you, then you will allow yourself to consistently do that. And that's how I've written so many songs and why I write songs so quickly. Like Dominica knows this, that when I sit down, I will write and write a whole song in a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. But it's only because of that, because I allow myself to get into that space Mm -hmm. and block everything else out. And it's all about just focus. If you can focus, you make that happen. I need to do that more. Super solid advice. One of my most favorite things that I used to do, I would go to the mall and I would walk around completely by myself with no agenda to shop for anything. I was just walking around looking at the different brands, especially during season changes to see what was coming up next, what was being, you know, tossed and just seeing what the colors were for the season and things like that. Cause that was one of the places that I got a lot of inspiration for doing things for my clients of like, Hey, let's talk about, you know, different fonts and how things go together. And I miss just the like meandering of being out in the world or going to the mall or going wherever and just being like, wow, look at what all these other big corporations or companies are coming up with and doing. It's not the same going on their website and seeing what it is. It's just not. It's just, I don't know. But when we can get back to doing things like that, I look forward to becoming a mall walker again. <laughs> I heard on the radio, they were talking about that. The, this was in Butte, Montana, where Brendan Love Burchard Montana. is from. And they they were talking about how they had to stop people doing mall walking. And they, they have something like a few thousand people who mm-hmm. tend to do that. And- it was just part of their thing, but partly because it's so cold there and people want to be able to walk that that was mm. one of the places that they could go indoors and just walk around during the winter. And so what they were saying is that they're like, they've been trying to open up and get to a point where enough people are vaccinated, enough people that can be indoors where they can actually have people come through and, and go walk. And uh, so, you know, I mean, it seems like they're going to be opening that up again and just want to throw that in there. <laughs> I randomly heard that on the radio. That's so interesting. And, yeah. <laughs> who, who did you say is from there? Brendan Burchard? Is that what you said? Yeah, that's where Brendan Burchard was born. I, Butte, Montana. I thought, it, I thought it was from Ohio. That's interesting. I love Montana. We almost moved to Montana. We really liked it there. But talk about isolation. I am already feeling isolated as it is. <laughs> yeah, you'd be way more isolated in, in yeah. Montana. Where we live, though, I'm excited for you to come visit at some point when it's not depressing and it's beautiful out. <laughs> Uh, it's look, this area is so beautiful. It's beyond stunning, but, but I'm from California. (laughs) So it's like this whole new world of getting acclimated to being at a higher altitude. Like I, I was doing a lot of research on depression and altitude, and apparently that plays a big role in, in low mood. So, 
you know, I've got, I've got a lot of things working against me right now that I have to be like, no, we're going to just talk to somebody and take the vitamin D and move our bodies and drink lots of water and say no and all the things, <laughs> you know, because it's, it's a lot. I got to say about Brendan Burchard, yeah. his mom is awesome. I got to oh, hang yeah? out with, with her a little bit and she was quite a nice lady and very fun. Nice. Yeah. Well, I know some, some people love him and some people don't. I think he's great. Yeah. yeah. He, he's got some, some good things to say. He used to live just about 15 minutes from me. No way. Um, yeah. But then he moved to Puerto Rico for, I'm sure, tax purposes. Makes sense. Yeah. But also kind of funny how you and I fell into this, like, loving on the parents thing. Because we both were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> with, like, with Russell's with, dad. Uh, Russell Brunson. Yeah. Dad. Who's fantastic. <laughs> I want to have him on the podcast. I think Ross would love that. It'd be fun. Mr. Brunson. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Brunson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. so, um, okay. So the two other things I want to talk about is that one is that there's this common misconception that if you're, you're, you know, either born fortunate or that you've gotten to a point where you're you know fortunate enough to have money or, you know, you're raised with a good family that, you know, you have perfect mental health Mm. and that's not always the case. And there's two sides to this. And there's actually, uh, someone just came out with a book. I cannot remember it. And if I can, uh, research it, I will put it in the show notes, but again, on the radio, I, I hear a lot of things on the radio, usually in the, in, in my drive to go pick up things like these cupcakes, which is a mile away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was very interesting because, you know, what the guy came out with a book and he, what he was saying is that sometimes what happens is that when you look around and you feel like you have these issues, but everyone has this appearance that everything is great, that you just start getting more and more depressed because you feel like you should be happy, but you're not. Mm -hmm. And you start to spiral. That's what happened to me. Exactly. And I want you to think about this because it's very easy to go online these days and look at the world and think that everything is great and you're and you know and be dealing with whatever you're dealing with and go man all these people on Instagram they look like they got great lives mm-hmm. and i'm dealing with all of this crap but you don't see all of the crap they're dealing with cuz they're not showing it to you yeah and we talked about that in, in two episodes ago about how the gurus they never share the, the the stories of people who don't get success with their programs. They only share the success stories, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It's the same when people are posting on Instagram, they only share the good stuff. Occasionally, once people have had enough success, sometimes they'll they'll share like, oh, this was, you know, this was actually the reality. But the majority of the time you don't actually see that. Mm-hmm. Right. So we've got to talk about these things. We've got to have real conversations about it. And that's why we're here having this real conversation because we own businesses. We have lives just like you guys. And we deal with stuff day in and day out. And some of it's great and some of it's not. And and that's okay. But just know that like if you're dealing with stuff, you're not alone. Like we're dealing with stuff too. That's part of it. If you need help, get help. But hopefully some of the ideas that like we've shared will help you, but I want to leave you with, with one last thought. Okay. So, and this is a big thing. Okay. Because especially as business owners, Hey, I want you to stop trying to earn a million dollars. Okay. <laughs> and this is really important for your happiness because what ends up happening is that if, when you try and earn a million dollars and Gary V agrees with me on this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want, if you want some credibility, there you go. Gary V agrees with me. Okay. <laughs> what you should be doing is instead trying to earn $75,000 per year. Okay. Now in some, in some areas uh, might be depending where you live, might be a little less, it might be a little more, but what you're trying to get to is the level of income that is equivalent to the level of happiness that, that, in, that income will, that money will bring you. And in most cases, that's right around the $75,000 mark. Mm -hmm. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, because that is the threshold of happiness that you can achieve from money. So any money you earn beyond that 
it's not going to bring you any more happiness. And that's the trap that people fall into. What ends up happening is they use money and go out and they spend that money and they get little shots of adrenaline trying to make themselves feel better. And they buy all this stuff and then they buy more and they buy more and they buy more. It doesn't make them any happier overall, maybe for a few minutes, maybe for a day or a week, but it doesn't make them happier. So instead of going out and trying to earn a million dollars, get to your level of happiness and then work on yourself. Take the time to work on realizing that that's your, your baseline of happiness. And what can I do then to improve my happiness and not try and just use money to fill holes that that are really not going to be filled. Plus you'll pay a lot less in taxes. <laughs> well, yeah. And a, a lot of times when you're trying to earn a million dollars, the reason you don't earn a million dollars is because you're trying to earn a million dollars. Exactly. Well, wrong said. intention. Yeah. Intention. It, we, we talked about this before is that intention matters. So if your intention is to earn a million dollars, that gets in the way of earning the million dollars because you need to focus on doing good work, putting good things out into the world. The more you do that, the more you f focus on the process, focus on getting the results for your, for your clients. Like, look at what are they doing? That's just the money becomes a byproduct of that. And with that, you guys remember to be kind to each other because you just don't know what struggles someone else might be facing or dealing with. So thanks for listening to this episode today. And if you guys are struggling, we will have some, some hotline phone numbers in the show notes that you guys can call if you're feeling like you're in the middle of a crisis. If you want to reach out to us and just share a little bit about, you know, maybe some tips that you use for your own mental health, your own sanity, we would love to continue to learn from you guys. We can all learn together. And that's it for this week. We'll see you. Yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. On the next episode, Facebook admits defeat. Yep. Facebook has completely bowed down to Apple and marketers and media buyers all over the world are feeling the effects. We are going to talk about the current issues going on with Facebook ads, Apple's iOS 14 update, the long-term implications for advertising online, where we feel Facebook is going wrong and what we're doing in our businesses for our clients to get them results even while Facebook ads are a big pile of flaming doo-doo. Yes, they are so bad right now, you can actually smell them. Ugh. Information like this is only shared right here on the BPB show, and that's why you should boogie on over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. Come on, boogie with me. Blah, 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 ah, blah. Oh, I think I'm actually gonna make myself sick. <laughs>